So you think that Christmas is Christian, huh? Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. this country was founded was to escape the idolatry of the Roman Catholic Church as well as the atrocities committed by them in slaughtering millions of Protestants and Jews down through history for not partaking in the sacrament of the Mass. It is the central focus of their worship. When we read in the Catholic Encyclopedia, we find in their own words on the article on Christmas, the word for Christmas in late Old English is Christus Masse, the Mass of Christ, first found in 1038. The Mass is the twisting of John 6 in the scriptures, and it is idolatry of the most monstrous kind. It is an abomination, as will be shown in plain English by the light of scripture. When we read Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, verse 1, it says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Notice how this is only addressed to Israel, who are the fewest among all the nations. It's the same today as the elect are the few in the New Testament. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The signs of heaven would be in the stars. So how does that dismay? God is also telling them not only to don't do their ways, but to not even learn them. Now what were the heathen doing? They were worshiping the stars and the planets. Still do. They would sometimes see a comet as an omen, as they've been called the harbingers of doom. God is through Jeremiah telling them not to pay attention to them. One such example that dismayed the pagans or the heathens is the Big Dipper. It has a different position in the sky with each different season. And if you'll notice, when you look at what the heathen have done with this, you'll see what's called the wheel of the year. And where the swastika comes from. These two stars point back towards Polaris, or the end of the Little Dipper, also known as Ursa Minor. Now, is it coincidence, or is it caused by God to dismay the heathens in this way? How many times do the scriptures say God stretched out the heavens in the Old Testament? Plenty. He said he did it by his discretion in Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Let's go back to the Celtic wheel of the year. And as the wheel goes round and round, which brings us to the point that corresponds with this time of the year. This is called Yule. This coincides with the winter solstice. The pagans originally had in their Yule celebration had things like mistletoe, holly and evergreen trees for decorations. They had bonfires along with ritual sacrifices and gift giving. Does that sound kind of familiar? The Yule log was lit with the previous year's leftover Yule log, and they would burn the whole tree starting with the biggest part. They left the smallest part out in the house. They had prayers for the Yule, and after they set up their Yule altar, then they would also have their Yule cleansing ritual. And it keeps going on. This was all dictated by the stars in the heavens, if you'll remember, which we read about in verse 2. A lot of this also crept into Rome when they invaded Britain, but they already had their own feasts at that time of the year, which were passed down to them by the Greeks, like the Feast of Saturn, called the Saturnalia. Rome had a week-long festival starting on December 17th that went to the 23rd. The winter solstice was originally on the 25th, but due to calendar changes, it's now around the 21st. No work was done during this time. Slaves were freed. 
this was a week-long party that pretty much anything went, including orgies of the most grotesque kind. We've already brought out the, the point about the pagan sun gods in another lesson you can find here. The Roman god Saturn comes from and was equivalent to the Greek god Kronos. These were the main gods of Greece and Rome. These festivals have pretty much stayed the same. Rome, the Roman Catholic Church has just stuck Jesus Christ's name on all this paganism. Do you think that this is what Jesus wants his holy and righteous name associated with? Not a chance. Not the real Jesus, anyway. Let's verify that back in Jeremiah 10 and read verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. We're going to take a look at this word vain in the Hebrew. It's the word hevel, and it means empty or vanity. It's the same word Solomon used in Proverbs, the 21st chapter, verse 6, which states, The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Man, doesn't that make sense? To be carnally minded is death. Let's go back to Jeremiah and read verse 4. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. A second witness to this is in Isaiah the 40th chapter, and let's read that starting in verse 18. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. Sound familiar again? All those presents under the tree are vanity. They're worthless. Doesn't James, the first chapter, say that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above? Let's go back to the Catholic Encyclopedia one more time and see how the Church of Satan lies about this again. The term mule is of disputed origin. It is unconnected with any word meaning wheel. Bald face liars is what they are. Now comes the most heinous part of all this. As was stated at the beginning of this study, America was founded to get away from this abomination, and this is how far this country has gone away from its Puritan roots. They saw anything that had to do with Roman Catholicism as idolatry and wouldn't have anything to do with it. Now we have these preachers that call themselves reformers, like John MacArthur. Some call themselves Calvinists or Reformed Baptists, like James White. That not only do they reject what is obvious in the scripture, they also lead their congregation into this hellish doctrine of paganism disguised as Roman Catholicism. Remember Satan's job description in Revelation, the 12th chapter? John MacArthur is the president of the Master's University. James White has a master in theology, a doctorate in ministry, and a doctorate in theology. I'm just picking these two guys out because you can see in a video on John MacArthur on YouTube why he won't say what, why they do Christmas to his own congregation when they present the fact that it's paganism to him in a Q&A. He just states that they are going to do it and writes his little Christ Mass or X Mass books. Let's see if I can get that in there. There's one. It's called God's Gift of Xmas. And this other one is The Miracle of Xmas. What's funny is, not three weeks ago, at the time of this taping, he released a video called The Heresy of the Catholic Mass. Seriously. Does being double-minded ever bother you, John? 
You promote heresy in your X mass books. These are heresy. Out of one side of your mouth, and yet you'll say predestination and election out of the other side. And let's not forget about James White, who does the same thing in his tweet about pagan sun gods. Why do both of these obviously very intelligent men put their approval on X-Mass, knowing its origins? The love of money is the root of all evil. They talk a good game and make a show about predestination, election, and the sovereignty of God 50 weeks out of the year, and then go hold hands with their Catholic brothers the other two weeks out of the year, and put their approval on the customs of the heathen. Hey, with all their flattering titles and their knowledge, and while I'm thinking about it, what does the Bible say about knowledge in 1 Corinthians, the eighth chapter? Doesn't it say that knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth? That word charity is agape, which is the same word love in 2 John, when it says, this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Were there false prophets that led the children of Israel into Baal or Baal and grove worship in the Old Testament? All the time, and it's the same way now. Why is that? In Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the Lord told Jeremiah that these are the prophets of the deceit of their own heart, and they have forgotten the name or the authority of God for Baal or Baal. There is no fear of God, nor is there any godliness with this type of doctrine preached by them. You could actually call the customs of the heathen, the traditions of men, and it would be sound doctrine. Our Lord chews on the Pharisees for doing these ridiculous traditions. Let's read that in Mark, the seventh chapter, starting in verse five. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He could just as well be talking about anyone who not only do them, but put their approval on these vain traditions like X-Mass. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, the commandments like Yule worship, Yule altars, decorating with wreaths and mistletoe. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Just like we just described these two intelligent men who call themselves reformers that reject the commandment of God. Let's skip down to verse 13 to find out the end result of what they do according to the Lord God himself. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye. You make the word of God of none effect in that there's no oblation and there's no sacrifice to the God of the Bible. It's to the God of self or the God of the church of Rome, which is Satan. I've done this here a few times here recently, but it's, I believe it's worth another look at this word tradition again in the Greek. It's the word parodosis. Now each of these letters have a numerical value, so let's look at these values. P in the Greek is the letter pi, and it equals 80. A is alpha, which equals 1. R is the letter rho in the Greek, and it equals 100. We have alpha again at 1. D is the letter delta in the Greek, which equals 4. 
O is the letter Omicron, and it equals 70. S is the letter Sigma, and it equals 200. I is the letter Iota, and it equals 10. Sigma, again, equals 200. So doing a little quick addition, this equals the number. 6, 6, 6. Ever heard of that number, John? Jane? Sure you have. I've gone over this, as I said before, but let's read this, the significance of this number in Revelation, the 13th chapter, and read verse 15. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. In the Greek, the word man is anthropos, which in this case is a genitive singular masculine noun. This ties back to the man of fierce countenance we studied about three months back. You can check that out if you like, and I'll try to give a link right here. With this being the third of the XMAS studies this year, you've got a ton of information on what actually XMAS is and how much God hates it. With that, let's end this with one more comment and verse. Doesn't all the world love Christmas? Let's see what the Lord has to say about that in Luke, the 16th chapter, and read verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. That should be enough said, but think about one more thing. What kind of holy and righteous God who tells you not to lie in Exodus the 20th chapter and Deuteronomy the 5th chapter would have you to lie to your kids about Satan Claus. That's the church of Satan and it's preachers that tell you to do that.